If you were away from home, go. Do you want to see an example of a of a of a man being belittled every single one, you know every week for I guess for 50 years? Go look at Fred Flintstone because his wife always basically pushed him around. He never did anything right until the end of the show. Oh really? Yeah. Then that's the way it works with the loud. They did. He did nothing right and ended up with the lady. Mm -hmm. So. They were married for like 20 some years, Actually, got divorced, was, and then back together again. So that, yeah, that was the interesting part because yeah. it's like a no. Maybe, I'm not going to tell. Them. Well, actually, part of this this is this is reality history. TV. This, this is, is reality history. TV. This is history. So I, you know, it's that that first scene that they actually it was actually the first scene they shot was them in the pizza place. Yeah, where they're all going to. What happened was was the uh, they none of the people in real life were like they were portrayed by the cutting. They didn't realize what a cutter could do. And the cutter basically made everybody a character, a character themselves. And well, here's the other aspect, because this is very real with what goes on on TV, right? Is that the actor, actress who play the part, they edit it, and you may not always be happy with the character, but it's like, when they edit, they're telling a story or their yeah. vision, but some of them are purists, where they're like, they're trying to tell the story as it happened, but other times they're kind of like, no, here's the, the business side of it, is if it's not interesting, it's not going to sell. Well, yeah, no, but they, they pumped a million dollars into this thing and then ran over budget, the, oh, really? uh, the lounge thing. It was tremendously over budget because these guys were eating film up. When film, the day they would use digital cameras, there's, you eat a hard drive, you just stick another drive on. Well, because they're sitting there going like day 79, roll, such and such. Yeah. You know, and they show where, you know, they're all in Santa Barbara. She decides to go off to Taos, New Mexico. Yeah. And he's going off to, um, you know, uh, Lance is off in New York. And but you know, every time they're, they're taking off, they do have film crews following. Yeah, they went, they went to Paris, France for him to, to work also, mm -hmm. where he's going to be a street performer in France. I mean, so. The, it's it's like the, the the like I said the thing where they're going to fight back was basically if you look who is the uh, okay Pat Pat Loud is the anchor of the family she definitely is but who is the person that is the glue of the family it's Daddy mm -hmm. it's Daddy they wanted you know she tossed him out of the house tossed him out on national television I know but she needed him to fight back. Well, uh -huh. Because he was the, he's the guy that basically, you know, always in jail. He's a, he knew how to handle people. He was a salesman. And she didn't. So <laughs> he would basically, I'll, you know, I do remember what they said that, that while she was, uh, you know, the domineering mother, women's lib type, father was the one that kept everything going on an even keel. Mm. So he kept the family from <laughs> self destructing on national television. They did a campaign. Which I could, I could actually see that happening. Yeah. When, when you actually saw it, because when, when you're watching the film, you know, they're watching it and all of a sudden they're looking at how they were portrayed. Yeah. And they're going, no, let's go ahead and fight back. We're all yeah. going to sit together. We're going to go out and have pizza. And very public. Let everybody stare no, at us. No, but he, okay, he's the guy that you see. And he'd be there, hi, I'm, I'm Bill Lau. And he'd shake his hand, put his arm around you, and be talking about stuff. And he, she'd be over there. Oh really? She always had this, like she was, uh, you know, d you know, really pissed off at the world look all the time. She was, you know, like I said, she was, you know, hot and sexy, which basically helped out. And he called her sultry. Sultry, yeah. But she, you know, she had this um, 60s, 70s liberated woman thing where she was in charge. I mean, I'm in charge. But he was the one. I, 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 they basically. The family did not like, I mean, they, I mean, that's what they said, you know, they called them freaks. Mm -hmm. They did, you know, called them names. You know, they basically, they were laughing at them all. I mean, I remember, I was working on... Um, uh, you were there I when was it was there. all happening. I, mean, I remember, I was working in television and stuff, uh, and they, they, they said, you know, these, this, you know, they said, this guy Gilbert, I mean, what the hell did this guy do? I mean, he just destroyed... They said that we got the networks all across the board were throwing fits. Mm -hmm. Public broadcasting was condemned. Congress, this is when the Congress started going after the public broadcasting over defunding it, over this show. The, oh, uh, really? The, the, so the, this the, really uh, was a turning point. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it set the Republicans off. It set the, de the Democrats, you know, the ACLU is on both sides of the issue because, well, they had this right to do this. 
but they didn't have the, but the family has the right to fight back because they were lied to. And they said, well, you know, you know, so it, what I'm guessing is because the thing only is allowed to come out every 10 years, they, they had some sort of arrangement, but no, but um, it was a god awful time for broadcast television mm. and because they said, um, I remember at the same time we were talking about, they're setting, I mean, I remember uh, I was in a, a thing with the vice president of Retlaw Broadcasting, which was Roy Disney's company, and they're bishing up a storm right now. And, you know, they're basically trying to get women's uh, products on the air. Mm. And they wouldn't do it. And he said, we can't show that stuff on the air. And I do remember, you know, uh, I remember the gentleman, which was a nice person, and, you know, old white hair type traditional. He would have been, we're talking, this guy would have been a, a you know, right wing Republican, except he was a liberal Democrat. But that's what it was back in those days in broadcasting. He said, I'm going to have to start showing those goddamn feminine products because of what those people have done. When he's bitching up, he said that, you know, there's just no place in TV for me anymore. He quit. Mm -hmm. He quit. He walked off because he simply, there's no place for people like me now because he said the people love it. Mm -hmm. And he said they weren't, they, they said that uh, I, we can't put that on over the air TV. We can't do it. Well, they do it today, folks. They do it on American Idol. They do it on, um, they do it on So You Think You Can Dance. I mean, everything you can think of, they to try. It is the, uh, what, I remember one of the, I can't remember, one of the guys was, uh, one of the major broadcast. I, th I think it was David Brinkley were talking about it. He said, we have seen the destruction of television as we knew it. And television as we knew it wasn't great to begin with. You know, and... Oh, um, man, I could just hear everything. Newton Minow, basically, you know, with, uh, with quite a lot of stuff. He was pissed off at it. But, uh, you know, also I see that this is something, you know, there's so many things that things come up in the news and it's a flash in the pan and it's a hot topic for... Uh, you know, like this is not three days away. I mean, or a week. It went on for a while. We put it until we got to the show. Uh, was it Tuesday night? I didn't realize that this was what this was about. I thought when they said the first family of uh, reality TV, I thought they were doing a thing about the people that made the stuff. No, they're doing it about the family that was involved. When the instant I saw the thing, the name, the Louds. Oh God, I. <laughs> I knew it because I sat through it. I mean, I sat through it uh, around lunches. I sat around through it at dinners. I went to uh, industry functions. It's like everybody talked about it, didn't they? Everybody was talking about it. And then the whole bit was, what are we going to do to top it? That was it. What are we going to do to top it? In other words, we grab the headlines and everybody's watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it was the, uh, it, it basically, television went to its lowest common denominator because it didn't cost, okay, well, a million bucks plus a change, and they got 10 weeks and all this advertising. Basically, they spend a million dollars an hour on television 20 years ago. It's more than that today. So it but it's all that controversy. They got yeah. it all in the news. That That's right. And, um, I mean, they get more... Uh, okay, but what happens is in a lot of these shows today, like the game shows, or the variety shows, they get so tired of having to insult people that they get they don't come back. Um, but it's we, all, we see that on comedy shows. Yeah, but yeah. Um, we have seen people on shows hurt by the... The thing. I mean, we saw a gentleman that, that basically died from uh, died that uh, that was hurt by what everybody thought of him. He said, "It's a, an acting." Mm -hmm. He said, "I because we were talking to him. He really got serious. He said, I'm acting. It's not for real. I'm acting." And they basically detest. Well, they they made him look like he was a low life on every show. Oh, really? Remember? I mean, it was always, every, we went to a lot of those things. This guy was also it's, like the scum of the earth. You know, it's sometimes where you're acting so well that they think it's you. Yeah. And then, so, so in one, one good sense, he was a very good actor. That's right. He was a very good at what he did, but it was hurting his family because mm -hmm. they basically did the thing. But this basically, you know, uh, what, the thing about it, what they were pointing out at the end of the movie was the fact that um, all of these, all the family members, they only rose above what happened. They all became 
Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking everybody was a god awful success. Mm -hmm. Lance was the biggest success. We're talking guys that are literary agents. We're talking people running big industries. We're talking mm -hmm. people that you know uh, were big. And now they had their own. They, the kids did get their own band. They did. They were performed on that. You know. Uh, major you know, national. Part players. of it is, is like after something like that, it's like, oh, they want to see how they survived. Yeah, and right? it became all of them became well off. I mean, like, uh, like people what they don't understand is that, um, uh, like, Lance, the oldest, died ten years ago. He was fifty years old. He'd be sixty-one years old basically now. And the show, I mean, the youngest in the family was uh, only about five or six years younger, and six years younger than him. So they're all in their, four, you know, end of their fifties. You know, the parents are in their 80s, I guess, and they be, they overcame everything, beat the beat the guys, but in the process, they started something which is the, uh, you know, it was, it was a disaster. I can I remember, like I said, this was the day that uh, okay, they say that the the day that Michael Michael Jackson died was the day that uh, that there was a, to a complete crossover between entertainment and news, basically destroyed. Really. News. They said though the day the Louds television came on, that the show came on, was the day the broadcast television was forever changed and not changed for the best. Interesting. And it's funny that it's like um, um, Diane Lane is trying to explain things. Actually, you no, know, uh, she. Everybody did everything. Nobody saw who they were working with, working on, except in the. Uh, their stuff that they did. They oh, were, that's right. Didn't they say they never met them until, they met them. They until only, the premiere? They saw, they watched the uh, the shows. That was how they did it. They watched the yeah, shows. And I actually kind of find that interesting. Yeah, which because, are Because part of it is they're playing characters that are, they're, they're still alive. They're, they're still alive. And a lot of times they try and meet those characters. So that they can possible. get a thing. Well, I mean, because um, like Tim Robbins is playing Bill Loud. Tim Robbins is basically one of the lines, you know, that you know, we, we need to jazz this thing up. So, you got to understand, I'm willing to get, I'll lay you odds because they were trying to be a theatrical family for the most of them. We got dancers, singers, right. musicians. They were jazzing it up a bit because the dad thought that that was probably the way to get, you know, the career going. He was doing, he was being overly flamboyant because he was selling himself. Mm -hmm. The children were overdue. Well, we got, we got one scene where one of the kids is playing with Jagger. Well, you know, okay, right, here, yeah. here's one of the, the, here's a quote from Diane Lane where she says, um, this is about the movie, the posturing that goes on in front of cameras these days is frightening. People are so afraid of being born that they'll light themselves on fire and so-called reality TV is putting gasoline on the flames of people's neuroses. Well, she said, she, I couldn't do this. Mm -hmm. She said, uh, I could not allow these cameras to follow me around. This is a woman that basically cameras follow her around. Mm -hmm. They've been I worked with Diane Lane when she was younger, folks. I, Cat, like, Cat Laddie and Little Britches, I think they got that a bad movie. I also was in a movie where I remember she she's done nothing but bitch about all her life because she took her clothes off and she was like 16. Well, mm, so. and I remember when we were sitting there watching the film, where they're sitting there looking at it going, you know, you got how many hours and how many rolls of film of this family doing things like watching TV? Yeah. Right? There's got to be some drama in it, otherwise it's never going to sell. So they deliberately, the Galifianni right. character deliberately pushed buttons, deliberately. What happened was he got the trust of everybody in the family, mm -hmm. and, he, and his film crew got the trust of everybody in the family. The film crew is just as guilty. I mean, they're, they're trying to look like the good guys, I can guarantee you that... Uh, if you watch the show, watch the scene where the cameraman slugs Galafina's character Gilbert. And I can't do this, I can't do this. And they basically leave. The next day they're filming the destruction, the total destruction of the family the mm -hmm. next day. Total destruction, they're there filming. And the, and, and Pat, and Pat Loud, the Diane Karen character. I don't want you there, I only want them because they're friends of our family. Uh -huh. I want our friends to be there. Well, they shouldn't have been there, period. Because if if he the guy was so pissed the day before that he couldn't he couldn't do it anymore, then what the hell was he doing there the next day, filming the total you know the, the denigration of the father, which didn't come off that way. It did not come off that way. Period. Well, didn't they say something like, uh, "What goes to the victors?" Yeah, spoil the victory. Uh, Spoils go to the victors. They won. And history is told by the people that usually won yeah, the battle. Because Bill Loud. 
You know, he basically was the victim of the family. We got the family. The family's got to be more responsibility. The family's got to do this. So the guy fooled around. Basically, we got like sixty percent of the guys in this country are divorced. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my mother and father. Actually, that wasn't a time when they really didn't get divorced, did they? No, they stayed together. I mean, my mother and father were the only members of my family that didn't get divorced. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I mean, my grandmother was married to two two different Germans. So one German went off to World War. And then he didn't come Never back, so back. she didn't come back, so she married another German. But um, but still, every member in my family, but my mother and father and me were divorced. I mean, so but um, uh, he, you know, uh, he, he paid attention. The the, the 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 beating him down that was supposed to be the high point of the show didn't happen. He basically, you know, uh, okay, no, I guess, you know, I guess I'm leaving. And then um, mm -hmm. that was it. He he never changed character. He was always. I mean, my guess the guy probably. I mean, I, all, all I only ever saw him in person was that he was always the shaking your hand, the putting the arm around, always the smiling salesman. Mm -hmm. But generally, I always you know like uh, um, my grandmother would say, "Be the gentleman that does nothing but smile," mm -hmm. because that guy will slash your throat when you turn your back on him. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing there was a really tough as nail side. <laughs>